This is still just a proof of concept model, a second order magnetic gear coupling. I've taken it apart to show you the individual components. This is the pinion. It will move into position and you'll have actual coupling with the 12 bolts. The pinion is mounted on a free spinning shaft. This is the main gear. It has 22 magnets, 11 pole pairs that will mount on proper prop shaft. This is also simply a bolt free spinning on two bearings. I will first do manual demonstration of the speed and reduction using a little hand lever and then add this brushless motor to test it at high speed. These two white marks are just there to index one revolution. This is conceptually identical to the model in my previous video with the exception that the pinion magnets now also couple actually, not radially anymore. And of course the new ratio, I've got one pole pair, 11 pole pairs, 1 plus 11 is 12, so 12 steel inserts to modify the magnetic field. It of course also works in reverse. I found a really nice way to demonstrate the modification in magnetic field between the gear and the pinion using this mock-up. I'll uh, show how that works towards the end of the video. There we go. All set up. This is a 1270 kV brushless motor and I'm running it from a 3-cell LiPo battery. And here there is some imbalance on that pinion, so I can't take the speed up too much. I'm going to load the propeller, and you can hear that the torque load is very much transferred back to the motor. But one very interesting thing that I noticed was that if you completely clamp the propeller, the static torque is actually much less, and the motor unloads. The torque transfer to the main gear is limited by the flux strength between the main gear magnets and these bolts. And since these magnets are not very powerful, it limits the maximum amount of torque that can be transferred to the prop. I'm going to try and explain the gear reduction. I've marked the north polarity on the pinion with black and the same with south polarity being unmarked on the main gear. So the north polarity magnetizes the steel insert that attracts the south polarity over there. So if I move the pinion to the next steel insert, it pulls that south pole into position. And I moved it to the one below, it pulls this south pole into position. For that north pole magnet to move in line with the steel insert I need a complete polarity change on the pinion which means one half a revolution so to get one polarity change per steel insert you need one polarity change on the pinion side as well. This mock-up represents the main gear component as well as the fixed steel inserts of a second order gear system. Each hole represents, for instance, let's say the north polarity and each solid part in between represents 
south pole. And then each hole represents a steel insert. So when a north pole aligns with one of these holes, we should be able to see light coming from behind. That will give us an idea that this steel insert has been polarized to north and consequently it will pull the south pole on the pinion into position. Let me mount this against some nice strong backlight. Okay, there it is nicely in silhouette and you can see that towards the top half pretty much all the north poles align with the steel inserts and towards the bottom all the south poles align. So you end up with a two pole field and hence your pinion will be a single pole pair following these two polarities. Now if I change the position of the main gear, just follow the position of my hand and compare that with the rate of change of the actual field. So there you have it. I hope that was instructive.